let's get started. Um, thank you again, Nico, for joining us today. Um, today we'll be talking about an introduction to Decentraland, and we have Nico who's going to take the floor. Thanks for introducing me. Um, all right, so um, I guess the, this talk is about like giving you a bit of an intro about how the central end works, what it's all about, um, and what opportunities there are for people to you know start start businesses or start little you know small scale projects that could grow into bigger projects if you choose to. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, have a little presentation that, if I'm honest, is more of a rehash of all the presentations. Right. Okay. So you guys are seeing that? Yeah, looks good. Okay, awesome. So um, what is the central end? The central end is a virtual world. So it's in ways not too different from what you may be like, used to seeing as you know, Second Life or other platforms. But what really makes it, well, in this talk we'll like, cover what makes it special, how it's you know, different from other alternatives that are, we might even consider them a, a bit like, you know, old school and more established. Um, what can the central be used for? Like there's a ton of different uses, like basically it's an open world and people have been, you know, finding all sorts of creative ways and things they can, they can do in this space. And we'll do a little tour and I'll show you what the central end actually looks like and like showcase a couple of like, nice examples of like not just pretty looking things, but like fully functional and like whole ecosystems that are being built on top of the central end. And finally, I try to briefly cover the tools that are available for, con for content creators for, you know, creating this, this kind of content. Um, so what is the central end? As I said, it's an open world and what's special about it is that it's owned by its users. This is made possible through the blockchain. So um, if I hope you, you're all familiar with NFTs, non-fungible tokens, and how the blockchain makes it possible to, you know, ju not just trade coins as, you know, Bitcoin and other coins have, you know, made pretty, um, you know, general knowledge lately. Um, but it's also possible to trade tokens that are unique and that have unique characteristics and that, um, you know, makes each, each one of these individual tokens special in some way. For example, the land in the central land is split into parcels and these parcels each have unique coordinates. And, you know, it's not the same to own one parcel that's, you know, way out in the distance versus another parcel that might be, you know, right near the center where everyone starts. And it's you know not the same to have a lot, a lot of you no know, like separate, very distant parcels one from each other than it is to have a whole bunch of you know parcels all together where you can you know actually build something huge that uses all of that large space. And you will see that there's a lot of other like places where ownership becomes important in the central land. For example, in wearables, like items of clothing that your avatar can own, those are also represented as tokens on the blockchain. And that also amounts to a whole lot of interesting use cases. And there is, you know, a lot of runway or a lot of things that we can also like, build into this kind of mechanic. And like the central end is pretty much still in its infancy, you could say. Um, it's already starting to provide some interesting use cases, but like there's like, massive untapped potential for everything to do with you know, ownership and decentralization. So in the central we got a lot of like 3D content. People create things from you know sculptures to like whole museums to exhibit digital art to games that people can go in and play, social experiences of all sorts. Um, and it, really part of the decentralization like relies on the fact that people buy parcels of land and they are free to you know build what they may out of that. And yeah, as I mentioned before, the like the world is owned by its users. And what does that mean? Like it is a virtual world in the sense that there is like an open space that you can transverse and you can like walk through the world and run into things. And that is kind of interesting because it's, it, it's in a way that's pretty different from what other platforms do today. Like you might have Roblox, for example, where yes, there's a lot of creators creating their own experiences, but each one of these exists in this unique separate space 
one of the things that makes Central Lab the most interesting is that everything that's created by different content creators exists like right next to each other. Like you can walk through like a, an open field and run into random things as you walk, which really makes things a lot more like engaging. It also makes them more chaotic, yes, but we're all about embrace, embracing the chaos and like seeing how this grows into like a whole like emergent crazy world where you know you never know what you're going to run into which is part of the fun and players can yeah chat with each other they can do emotes they they, they got a whole different set of tools to express themselves and to make friends and socialize inside the virtual world and yeah another important quality of the central end is that it is persistent meaning that like it doesn't rely on people being there for the world to be there. Um, everything is, you know, just continuously running in a whole bunch of servers. Um, as I mentioned before, the 3D space, the parcels in the central end are, they're scarce in the sense that a limited number of parcels was initially minted. Like the, there is a limited space in the central end and it's like that by design because this scarcity gave, gives these parcels value, right? I mean, if, there, if people could just keep building out into infinity, like there is no reason why, you know, you'd want to hold on to your specific plot of land. But since there is an implicit limit on how many parcels you can have, well, like they, they gain value because, just because of the fact that, you know, not everyone can have one. Um, so, uh, yeah, I, I don't want to go too deep into this. As, as I mentioned, this presentation is really like something I'm reusing from a different presentation that has a very different focus. I want to focus this on what creators can do and not so much from the point of view of, yeah, someone who might be interested in the world as a player, as an investor. Um, but I just want to cover that the central end is decentralized in more ways than it may seem in the front surface. Uh, even the, the hosting of the servers that make up the central end is completely decentralized. So People from the community own the servers that host all of this content. Um, all of the code is open source, so people can contribute as external contributors. So you, you can not only create um, you know, the content that you will see in the, in the parcel of land, but you can also contribute to the whole like, tooling and engine and everything that is under the hood like, behind that. And also we have a DAO, uh, the Centralized Autonomous Organization, which is basically so uh, this could be a talk, a talk for a whole other talk, but a DAO is basically a way to organize actions in a way that really relies solely on the community. It's a way of, um, it, it, so, so anyone who, who holds tokens from the central land, be it land or be it mana, which is the central land's coin that has been emitted, um, has the right to vote on a series of different proposals or to even to make proposals for others to vote on. And um, some of these are automatically enacted by the DAO itself. The DAO is like a, a system that works without really needing to be um, like operated by any individual. It just like executes things as code whenever they are requested to it and whenever like the votes and the rules re related to that are complied. Um, and so that's the case for se several different kinds of things. For example, if you want to like list your scene as, you know, a bookmarked point of interest, or if you want, you know, an offensive name to be banned, if you no, know, the votes are there, then that just happens. But there are also another things that you could propose. For example, you could say, um, that you disagree with some policy or something, and you can, you know, write a proposal, get that voted and like it will get, be evaluated and like revised by everyone involved like behind the scenes. So um, getting to the tools that creators have for creating their content, um, the main two alternatives are the builder and the SDK. The builder is a pretty nice drag and drop tool where you can just like drag items and drop them into place. And you got a few things that are, that have behaviors of their own and they're configurable, but it's, basically aimed at being a simple tool for creating like simple, but uh, like fairly, you know, attractive experiences. The SDK on the other hand involves writing code. Like you need to have some level of, you know, um, 
you know, technical skills to use it, but it is like super powerful. Like uh, unlike like I don't know other platforms that have had know, like a, a sandbox or um, or Second Life or other platforms. Like with the SDK, you have absolute control to create games that completely follow your own rules. And well, the, the world itself is, uh, it, it's actually running on a browser. You don't need to download anything at all. And that's part of what makes it central and attractive as well. It's the, the like simple access that people have to the central land. So let's do a little tour. And uh, like, I wanna show you what this really looks like because I'm like, talking in very abstract terms. But I think that nothing is better than to actually go there. So if you just type play.decentraland.org, you will just start out in the middle of the central and you don't need to download anything, as I said. Um, it helps if you have a web browser, uh, a web, uh, sorry, a browser-based wallet set up, but it's not, it's not mandatory, it's optional, but I have MetaMask here, for example, and through my MetaMask account, I can connect and like, hold all sorts of tokens like wearables and other things. And some experiences inside the central end leverage that in different kinds of ways. So this is like the main lobby for the central end. There are a number of events that are live right now. And I could jump into any of them if I wanted to. There's quite a few more than I've seen here. A uh, little more and there's like a ton really. And where, where I am at right now is Genesis Plaza. This is a public space. So I, maybe I should do a little more like introductions. Oh, look, there's a couple of people here already. But maybe, maybe I should introduce myself a little better. I work in Nicholas Central. I work in the Central Land Foundation. The foundation is a nonprofit organization that exists as part of the Central Land ecosystem, but we're not by any means the only players. This is my avatar. And as you can see, I got some pretty cool skeleton legs. And these skeleton legs are, uh, um, are an NFT. They are a token that I bought. If I go into my backpack, you can see that I have quite a few different tokens that I've been buying and acquiring in different ways over time. And I can push them around to anything to her. Amazing. But I'm going to stick with my skeleton legs because they're really cool. Um, I can open up the map. And remember how I was, I was saying that there is a limited number of parcels in the central end. This is what the map of the central end looks like. Each one of these parcels is could be owned by a single person or someone could own a bunch of them and like put them together into a single large experience. Um, there's 300 by 300 parcels in the whole map. So if I go up to the limits, you will see that eventually the map ends. Um, I'm gonna jump into Wondermine, which is a pretty interesting little um, like grinding game where people basically like, have a pickaxe and they can grind, like, like they can mine meteors and find resources. And with the, those resources, they can buy a bigger pickaxe, like a, a better pickaxe, they can like upgrade and eventually they can like buy their own wearables, which are actual, you know, items with market value, they can actually sell them. And there are people who are like right there all day, really, because like, if you do the math, like if you spend enough hours there, you can actually, yeah, kind of make a profit. Um, well, one of the interesting aspects of the central end is the pay to earn, the, the play to earn, sorry, aspect, which isn't really present in many games. Um, and it's kind of a way of, you know, making your time spent playing a game actually, you know, reward you with something. Because that, that, that's something that um, gets set, like, that's, that's something that, that marks a significant difference between the central and most other games. You know, if you play World of Warcraft for, you know, hours and hours and end, and you eventually get super rare and valuable items, like you can't take them away with you. They're, they're still stuck in the server that belongs to the people who created the game. And like, 
you can only sell them within the internal, like the market to other people in that same platform, but it's not really the same as truly owning something. Like, if, if you get to the bottom of it, the things you own in the game really still belong to the game itself. You just, there's just, you know, information saying that you, you know, that this line in a database really, in theory, belongs to you, but it doesn't truly belong to you in a more like authentic sense. Um, but if, the, if this ownership is, you know, registered in the blockchain, then um, like th there's some, there's an authority that's way beyond the creators of the game saying that you're actually the owner of something. And you could bring this item to a com completely different context. And yeah, like you, you can, you know, earn a powerful sword in one game and then take it over to a completely different game. And if the creators of this other game want, like they could give that, you know, sword that you got somewhere else, like some, you know, utility within their game as well. And yeah, that, 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 that's one of the interesting things that I, that I see will be huge in the central end in the not so long term, like interoperability between, between games. So as you saw, it was just like mining one of these meteors. I can find another one and I will get a few resources and like with those resources, if I gather enough of them and enough of, you know, the specific resources to build different things, I will be able to upgrade my stuff and eventually get wearables. So yeah, in this, this meteor, I got some gold, the sapphire, a wonder gem. And if I check out my backpack here, you will see that I have a bunch of stuff. And I can go to this crafting machine here and I can check what these, these things cost to build or craft. And I mean, it, it takes quite a lot of time to like get the, you know, most rare items. But as you can see, like there's a bunch of people who are, you know, like if you come here any time of day, you, you're going to find quite a crowd because there's a lot of people who are really, really super into this game. Another thing that makes the central end super interesting is the whole art scene. Um, so there's a very strong, um, digital art movement that's come very strong this year um, in regards to people using NFTs, non-fungible tokens, to as a way of, um, you know, having their art represented. And the, the, there's a whole district in the central end. Actually, there's a ton of art galleries in the central end. I think it's one of the most like popular like uses of the central end right now. Um, but like, this is an area that is full of art galleries and there's tons of things. Um, they, they, this, this gallery actually has a collection that I believe it was dedicated to, that I believe was dedicated to um, Ferrari. Um, so yeah, they, 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 they set up a bunch of different collectibles like like referring to their cars, but actually like, there, there's a lot of like fine art. Like there's a lot of like real good quality artistic like paintings and in, in videos being represented in these picture frames. And yeah, th there's a lot of this. And actually we're like right on the verge of doing our second art week. So this Thursday, we, we start a whole like event with a whole series of like daily events for 10 days. We'll be like unveiling a whole bunch of different galleries with different collections and themes all over the place. And like really the whole art scene in the central end is like becoming huge. And like it's, I, I believe it's like the perfect place to make digital art make sense. Like well, one thing I say a lot is that the central end is in many ways context for this digital art. Like it's not the same to simply say, hey, I am the owner of this JPEG um, than it is to, you know, create a whole gallery with your curations and invite people and make a whole event out of it and, you know, have some kind of a, you know, virtual presence as a curator and earn a reputation as a curator. Um, and really like the possibility of like, just going in world and seeing all of this digital art as a social experience. Like, I think it makes it 
acquire a lot more value and then it it makes the whole idea of owning art a lot more like meaningful the other place i wanted to show as a example of what's possible in the central land is the white rabbit club so this is here i believe so an another thing that's pretty huge and that i think has the potential to become really big this year especially like in the whole the context of pandemic that we've been having and you know all of these live shows being you know cancelled all over the world is the idea of yeah like virtual live shows there's like huge opportunity for that and we've already had a, num a number of like shows from big names like Dylan Francis and Rack and there are a number of them coming like this year I can't really say many names because like a lot of things are still in negotiation but there's actually going to be some like pretty big mainstream like bands and musicians come going to do like live shows in Central Land um, so th this scene here is a nightclub. It's called the White Rabbit. Kind of references Alice in Wonderland. So you're kind of shrunken and take this little leaf boat up to this huge, crazy mushroom. And this is where DJs play. Actually, this makes a lot more sense if I go into night mode. And yeah, night mode, it looks a lot cooler. And yeah, like people play live music here and the whole place is pretty great. Um, I believe that, yeah, I got a couple of, so, so as I'm, I am an admin in the scene, I can actually like act as a bouncer. If anyone is behaving inappropriately, I can teleport them away from the scene or I can open this little ugly console here and like, control all of the different effects we got here. Oh, I got, I got company here. Hmm. And I can even make everyone dance. If, and I don't know if you are here in the conference or just some, someone who just happens to be here randomly, but I just made him dance. <laughs> um, Okay, so the other thing I wanted to cover, um, besides like showing you the actual world of the central and how it looks, is to show you a little bit of what the tools for building this content look like. So, um, sorry, I gotta, the, sorry. I, I got the little overlay from, yeah. So this little overlay in the middle of my screen, which is loading quite a lot. So the builder is like the easy tool. Um, and you can see, you'll see that it's actually quite, quite intuitive and quite nice to use. So we yeah, can create a new scene. Sure, let's call it new scene and makes, let's make it two parcels by two parcels, but I could change the size of what I'm building to anything I like. And I got a whole bunch of asset packs that I can choose from. For example, the fantasy asset pack lets me change like, the floor to this crazy texture. And I can add tree just like that. My, my internet connection is a little bit slow with the, because of the call, but should be seeing this tree pop up anytime now. Mm -hmm. Okay, something over. <laughs> but I can just pick the item and move it. I can you know, scale it up if for any reason I want the tree to be bigger. Um, I can also add some interactive items. For example, this store here can be opened and I can even like change some of the, oh, I, can, I can make things happen whenever the door is opened. So they, 
I add a second item, for example, if I add chest, I can set things so that whenever the door is opened, the chest also opens. And I can go in, preview my scene I just created, and you'll see that when I open the door, the chest opens as well. Um, so this is like the easy mode, let's say. Um, you've got easy tools, which are like a lot of fun to use, but they are of course limited in several ways. Um, the not so easy mode is to use the SDK and write code. Um, yeah, like code of course requires a certain level of skill. Um, here's the scene I'm right here. It's written in TypeScript. Um, and you also need to use the command line, which yeah, it might take some getting used to if you haven't like developed things before. But um, we got another got a number of like different tutorials and, um, and a whole lot of example scenes. If you go to the awesome repository, this is a whole repository that's full of examples, tutorials. Um, yeah, mostly a whole bunch of examples that you can borrow code from, even borrow models from. Is an example like picking objects up or having things spawn or um, like having moving platforms, um, like all of the common mechanics you might, you know, find in basically any basic game. Like we, we're trying to cover all of those with little examples that are fairly modular and that are fairly you know, simple to, you know, steal snippets from. Um, so, yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention is the Decentraland Discord is super active. Uh, like, there's a lot going on, and like, there, there's a lot of people who are, you know, using Discord as a way to, um, you know, learn the tools, get them, like, if they run into any issues, like, if you go, especially, especially if you go to the SDK support channel, like, and there all the time, and there are a lot of people from the community who are there all the time also, like, helping out anyone who runs into any blocker or any issues. Um, so that's the gist of what I wanted to talk about. Um, I think that like it would be maybe the best to open up the floor for any questions that you guys may have. Uh, hey Nico, this is Matt, uh, the one who is talking about Oculus or and stuff earlier today. Uh, hey, good talk. Um, I saw, I got on actually on the link you guys had and it looked really cool. Um, I was wondering, I got to like this one little parcel where there was like a puzzle you could do. Um, it was pretty cool, like clicking on nodes. And I noticed there's a lot of interactivity that like parcel creators can create within, like they can have little modals pop up. Um, you can get like event listeners. So it definitely seems like you can really customize the experience within a parcel. Um, I'm wondering for this hackathon, since the prize is a parcel, obviously we're not supposed to be making a cool parcel, um, right? Like, the like we're not supposed to be making cool parcels, right? Like we're supposed to be doing something else. I think. Um, no, I, I think making cool parcels is totally valid. I mean, if you have something that is, you know, an interesting experience for players, I, I think it is definitely valid. Okay. Um, I, like, I mean, the, 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 the contest is, you know, about startups. So, I mean, I, I guess like it should be more than something, you know, fun to visit, but maybe like the, the start or a proof of concept of something that could be, you know, built into a business model perhaps. Um, but I mean, w you, you could even, you know, build a, you know, a really cool statue and have a donation box next to it. And let's say that qualifies as a startup. Um, Interesting. Okay. Well, thanks. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, uh, happy that you, you know, you enjoyed your visit there. Um, I guess another question, since no one's asking, um, if we wanted to make tools for creation. One idea I had is I noticed still it's kind of sparse um, usage of the land. Um, this is a problem just very common in the 3D 
world, even if, even outside of like, oh, you have to buy the land. Like, you know, people make accounts on virtual worlds all the time. And, you know, like Neopets, you know, people make their Neopet page and like only 2% of them actually make it look cool. And usually the bottleneck is tools for creation rather than actual interest. Like if you just give someone an easy tool to make something, they're willing to invest like half an hour, an hour into making it cool, but they're not willing to invest 300 hours to learn how to use Blender and Sketchfab. Right. Yeah. So um, my thought was to make maybe tools to help people uh, create cooler parcels um, or another idea I had that was more blockchain-y. Uh, I thought the whole idea of renting land was really cool. And I thought um, something like a homeowners association where essentially groups of them could agree on some, someone dr drafts up a vision for like 30 parcels and uh, basically all the owners of those parcels cast votes until um, all of them have agreed. And then boom, all of them give access to something that'll execute. Okay. Now we're going to build, we're going to execute this code that builds this 30 by 30 architecture design on our land and it st checks it keeps for a period of whatever's agreed on like 30 days 300 days i um, wondering if anyone's done something like that because it could be a way where you could have more content in the world but the, the owners of the parcels don't have to make the content they just have to click a button that says i agree to let this content exist on my land for a period of time so, so th th there are a number of things that in different ways like approach that. Um, so on one hand, we have what we call the land pool, which is like literally people just like um, agreeing that they're giving the central foundation control to deploy stuff to the land. Um, like they are, they still own the land, they still can sell it, and they, they still could deploy stuff there if they wanted to. Um, but essentially the foundation can deploy different things there. And in fact, we, we've used that quite a bit to like deploy things that people have built in different contests. For example, like we, we had a builder contest where we had a lot of creators creating like really nice scenes, but they weren't necessarily landowners. So we like deployed all of that to occupy these parcels that were, like, you know, free to use, but not, but still had owners. Um, then we also got what you, what, what we call districts. So districts were a bit of a, an early stage of the central land. Before we even started selling land, we started um, opening, um, you know, bids for different districts and different people organized groups of people into creating like themed areas of the map. And if you, actually, I'm gonna show my screen again to make this a bit clearer. So there are large, large portions of the map that are rather than um, private land, they are sort of in between. They are um, land that is owned by a community with, within the central land. And where like each one of these districts has their different rules. Um, some are more democratic than others really, um, but some of them do have their own separate DAO um, to let the people who form part of these communities vote on different things. And like most of these are still, fairly early stages, but there is absolutely potential for them to like, you know, grow into something that is a lot more like centralized and yeah. So yeah, for example, you got the museum district which is pretty cool. Uh, SciArt Lab, the university district, um, like each one of these large pink areas is kind of a decentralized kind of community of people who all share a region of the map. Um, it would so be how, very, sorry. How does ownership of those districts work? Um, so they, they were initially like, so before we even had um, our initial um, land auction, the, the floor was opened for like the auction of district land and people bought into that um, like in the very early days of the project, I'm talking like four years ago or so. Um, so we don't now have a way for new districts to be created. That would be a very interesting thing to, to do in the future. Because um, yeah, you, you, you might have, you know, emergent groups of like-minded people who 
want to you know, build something more, you know, community, communitary in the region. Um, but yeah, it's it's one of the many many projects that we're trying to to cover. Like we only have limited numbers of hands, and there's a lot we want to do. Like there's like a million improvements to performance and improvements to you know what creators can do and the cap capabilities that you have through the SDK and um, like making the camera behave better and making. But I, I don't want to go into that now. But there's like more projects than we have people. So I wouldn't believe that would be coming anytime soon, to be honest. Well, if you have any ideas that would fit with the hackathon that you want to post in the channel, uh, that'd be cool to look yeah. at. Sure, sure. Um, so what, what you said about tools for creators creating stuff, that, that would be super useful. Um, so in this link I shared, the awesome repository, we have a, a number of libraries. Um, those were mostly created by me, but a few have come from the community. And in fact, recently a couple of people have requested grants to create their own libraries, um, like from their own, so, so like from their own initiative, they decided like, you know, this is something that I think would be, you know, useful to others. I want to create this as a library, share it with others. And they requested a grant from the Central Foundation. And yeah, like they're currently working on that. Um, and I mean, if you want to work on, on libraries, that would be super useful, I think. Yeah, um, I think it's super valuable. I'll talk to you later. All right, all right. Looking forward to it. Um, you can reach me on Discord, by the way. Any other questions? Anyone there? I don't know how long we have for this talk. Um, if I can afford to, you know, cover any other topics, but... Um, let me know. I actually wanted to say thank you for your presentation and just ask a quick question. When will the VR headset will be able to connect to the central land? Because I love the virtual world. I've been following this project since 2017. And actually us as the blockchain education network, we're building a, a university in the central land and oh, teaching, yes. yeah, uh, teaching uh, students VR, I think will be so amazing, especially when they can connect their headsets. So. Mm -hmm. Yes, so VR is a question that gets asked a lot. In, in big part because like when we first started the central land, like it was a big selling point. Um, and at some point, like we decided that, I mean, we had to focus on one thing at a time and VR was like a lot to, you know, we're probably biting more than we could chew. Um, but it is definitely in the roadmap. And what is being worked on right now like who is having a native client. So being able to run the central end in your machine um, as a program that you install rather than something that runs in the browser. Like we wanna keep those two alternatives alive, but we, so we're convinced that, you know, web VR is something that is super tricky. We've tried it and it doesn't quite perform well because like when you're using VR, you need to have good you know, frame rate and good performance. And you just can't get that reliably on the, on the browser. Um, so the first step towards VR is to be able to run the central end on like as its own executable program. With that, the, the second step is to then be able to support VR within that. Um, so like we estimate that before the end of this year, we should definitely have um, like the native client in fact, probably quite a bit before that. I don't know what the dates would look like for VR, but it's definitely like the next stage of the roadmap. Okay, that's still pretty impressive by the end of the year. So super excited for that. Great, great, glad, glad, glad to hear it. And yeah, I, I know this has been a long time coming, but yeah, it, 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 there, there were a lot of things to focus on, like centralizing the whole um, like, the whole ecosystem and messaging between players and avatars and wearables and it's just but when you start thinking about what it takes to implement something like this like you you really get your mind blown for, for like how many different huge projects need to be like started and put together in place for this to work and yeah i'm like i i, I was very like a, 
I, I really wanted to see VR as well. And like, it, it was a tough decision for everyone to make to push that forward, but it will be happening um, not so far in the future, if we missed. Yeah, absolutely. And one last question is, what excites you the most uh, in terms of upcoming projects or developments that you can share with us? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Um, there are a number of things. Um, like, personally, and, and this might be not so exciting to many people outside, but it's the fact that we're going to um, do a lot of work on fixing a lot of things on the SDK that have been broken for years. Um, like we, we, we're aiming to like, yeah, patch a lot of things with the developer experience that I think have been in their need to be repaired for a while. Um, but like there are a lot more exciting things also in the roadmap. And one of them has to do with um, having what we call portable experiences. Um, so right now, all of the stuff that happens in the central land is constrained to parcels of land, right? So you need to own a location and players go there and stuff happens on that location. What we want to do is be able to have items you can carry with you that enable the player to do things. For example, you could have a jetpack that lets you fly or a Polaroid camera that lets you take pictures and then mint those as tokens. Or you could have um, you know, a shooter game where all players that are carrying a special gun are participating in a game that is multiplayer and where you you, know, you can shoot yourself with the people who are also carrying one of these guns. Um, like I think that that opens the scope and the possibilities of the central end like exponentially. Because now it's not just about like visiting places, it's about carrying experiences with you. And suddenly, yeah, like e even, you know, scenes that are, you know, just the location, you know, like someone builds a, a really nice pyramid using the builder. And you know, that, that's nice to visit, but it kind of gets old when you've seen enough of those. Um, but suddenly if that can also be, you know, the location for something emerging to happen between players, like suddenly it becomes, you know, a lot more valuable and a lot more interesting because it's not just a place where you can, you know, hang out. It's also a place where you can play a shooter game or you can, you know, chase other players around or you can play tag or whatever. I can emerge from these items. So yeah, I, I would say that that is right now one of the most exciting projects we have in the not so far horizon. That sounds really cool. So for example, I could bring my crypto kitties with me to the center lands. And yes. Oh. yes. Uh, what, what one of the interesting use cases for that is having pets, for example, following around, or even having like Ethermon, um, you know, it's been building a really cool platform ecosystem around these, um, you know, animals. I am not sure if I can say the name of what they are, you know, inspired on, but we all know. Um, but yeah, like if you could, you know, bring your Ethermons along with you and have them fight anywhere you want and, you know, have them become part of, you know, the scenery even. That, that is in itself a really interesting addition. Well, that's really amazing set of updates. Yeah, mm -hmm. glad to hear that. If anyone has any questions, feel free to jump in. But if not, I think we can wrap up the call. OK. I think we're pretty much done here, Nicholas. Thank you so much. It was a great presentation. I learned so much. I think all the students here will learn a lot, too. And did you share your Discord channel that, so we can um, join? I didn't, I'm not sure if I shared the address of it. I, I probably did, um, but any, in any case, it's, well, the channel is the central end. Okay. Um, that, simply the central end. You, you can find it like that in Discord. And yeah, um, I encourage anyone to, to join it because there's a lot of really interesting discussions happening there. Um, Perfect. Yeah, th 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 thanks for having me. Um, sorry if my presentation was a bit rambling and all over the place, but um, there's a lot of grounds to carry, cover in a short time. And the Central Land is a whole world in itself. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. This was a, an amazing presentation.